Okay, so how do you do a reading assignment? You're going to use this book, and this book is the best in the world, but you have to know how to use it, and so that's what I'm going to do here. Um, you can see this book has 33 chapters in it, and they correspond to the, actually 35, but the first 33 correspond to the 33 chapters in our course. So if you are in chapter 20 on our course, then you'd be reading this chapter here. To get to use this book, the strange thing about it is that it is all in Latin from page one. Um, you can see the chapter is written at the top, Capitulum Primum, first chapter, cap one, abbreviation. And then over on the side here, you have the critical apparatus that will help you read the book. Now, you might not even need this critical apparatus. You might be able to just read it straight out, because the neat thing about this book is that it's intuitively comprehensible, which means that you would be able to understand it, even if you knew nothing about Latin. So you can probably read that first line there, and it'll make sense to you. Um, but that the way to get the best out of this book is to know how to really use it. And for that, you need to use the marginal notes. We have an A, and then an A with a line over it. This is the author demonstrating something new at this point in the text. You might look at that and see the, lo the lines over the A's and the line and think, what are those? Well, anytime you see something brand new that you've never seen before, look over in the margin and it will explain it. Um, here the author is showing that A and long A function like this. Normal A is just Italia, but you get long A when it's followed by the word in. In Italia. Okay, so that's something, that's a new thing. The author will also put new words over here in the line. So, and sometimes they'll even put like a picture to help out. Okay, so like there's the new word fossa, and the author wanted to show you that the fossa is related to a wallum up here. Fossa and wallum often appear together in real life. Okay, so you can probably guess what those words mean. But the author would rather you just think about it in the Latin, not translated into English, because you'll go better if you just think about it as Latin. Okay, what else? Um, you have to know how to use these side notes. So for instance, sometimes he uses this double arrow, which means that these two things are similar opposites. So at this point, you would know what a pugnare means. It means to storm like a castle. So if you knew that, then you could probably figure the similar opposite of that would be defend, right? So that's kind of simple. Um, ACC, of course, is accusative. You can go to a writing assignment and on the right side from your tools on the right, click abbreviations and go look up accusative. If you don't know what accusative is, it's... Um, so any of these little italic italicized abbreviations that you don't understand, like M. What does M mean? Well, it means masculine, or, or PL, plural, neuter, plural. If you don't know any of those, go look it up in the abbreviations that I've provided there. Um, the other thing you need to understand is sometimes an author will, the author will tell you where a word comes from so that you understand it better. So you can see this little alligator bracket here. That is saying that this new word in the line, declinatio, well, this is our English word, declenching, but if you didn't know that, you would, you would realize that declinatio is just a noun from the word that you already knew, which was declinat, declinare. So, or like up here we see imponent, the author wanted you to know that that once upon a time came from imponent with an N. So I-M comes from I-N. That's how that works. Or if you knew clamat, you could probably figure out what clamor would be, right? So this is telling you where a word comes from. That's, the word for that is etymology. Dictionaries will do this ad infinitum. They'll trace an English word all the way back to French, and then Latin, and then Greek, and Sanskrit, and Indo-European, and so on and so forth. And so 
if you understand at a, where a word came from, a lot of times you have a totally better grasp on what it means because you can understand what it originally meant way back then. So anyway, so that's how you use the things in the side margins of this book. Um, the other thing that you need to know about this book is the glossary in the back is not a standard glossary. This is a reference table. So if you had forgotten the word like existimare and didn't know what it means, you would look up here and guess what? There's no English. What do I do? Well, this 27 means that it is from chapter 27, line 62. So the author wants you to go back to that chapter and line number and review how that word was first introduced so that since you forgot it, this is probably the best way that you'll re-cement it in your memory if you remember the context or and the marginal footnotes that introduced it. So here is only every five lines are marked, 65, 70, so you have to count back, 65, 64, 63, 62. So there it is right there, existe, and then it starts on the next line, mat. So now how do I figure out the meaning from that? Well, the margin. So the margin, you would have come over here and realized, oh, it's for, it equals cancere, and it also equals putare. So if you know what cancere and putare mean, then you got it. So that's how this works. The author wants you to be flipping. Go look in the back, find where the, when you forget a word, find what line number, chapter and line number it was, and then go re-look it up. Because supposedly, if you've been reading this book from the start, you should kind of remember what these chapters were. Okay, so that's how to read the book. Now, how do you come fulfill this assignment? Well, at the end of every chapter, there are these exercises. There's first the grammatical Latina, and then there's pensum, which means an assignment. So there's pensum A, then pensum B, pensum C. I only require you for a writing assignment to do the last one, pensum C, because these are complete sentences. Now, the others would be really good. Like, you can learn a lot from them, and if you like these pensa, these kinds of assignments, A and B, then there's an actual whole nother book that Lingua Latina comes with that has tons of these. These are It's a workbook. But um, most people don't like them because they're just so heady and um, number crunch and word crunching. So I only re require you to do this bit in here, these sentences. And what I want you to do is I want you to type the sentence out in Latin and then answer it with a complete sentence also in Latin. And I want you to use macrons. Now you don't have to get the macrons in the middle of the word like me, dus, but you do have to get the macrons on the endings like the I here in me di. So, because you should, I really do want you to learn the macrons and the endings. And if you don't know those, then go look them up in the grammar chart. Um, you know, go to a writing assignment and click grammar charts from your tools on the on the right side. Okay, so you have to read this. Quote numi sunt in saculo julii. And figure out what that means. How many coins are in Julius's sack. And then write an answer in Latin, such as In saculo julii sunt septum numi. Seven coins. Something like that. And um, now, since this is computer online, how, you, you could write it out and scan it and then upload it to me through the other coin. You know, you can always up, scan stuff and upload any kind of file here from the, um, by dropping it into this yellow area or using the choose file button. Um, you can even put up like YouTube videos and or place it some put it, put it somewhere else online like Dropbox or Google Google Docs and just give me a link to it. That's another way to turn it in. So you could do that, but a better way would probably be to type it out 
And so now then the new pro like problem becomes, well, how do I type these um, how do I type these macrons, long A, long E? Well, the easiest way would probably be to go to any old culture assignment like this and go down and find one of the blanks that has this little, it's hard to see it, but there's this little corner here that is draggable. And make the blank nice and big. And on these culture assignments, you remember you can type macrons just by holding down the control key. So in saclo yulii sunt septum nomi. You could do that. Oh, I misspelled it. Now, remember, to type these macrons, the way you do it is control A, control E, O, oh, but control E doesn't work. Contr instead of E, it's control semicolon. JKL semicolon is because I didn't want to use control E because it's too close to control W and control R, either one of which would destroy the tab. So instead of control E, that's the only exception. You have to do control semicolon, control I, control U, control Y, and then the, to make it capital, just you hold down the shift in addition to that. So that's how you type make runs. Um, there's a, I'll put a link also down below this. I'll put a link down about other ways that you can type make runs right on your computer, like in Microsoft Word, um, either on a Mac or on a PC. So that's something you can do. Um, so whatever works for you to write the macrons, it works for me. Um, you could even do something strange like just typing out, you know, in saculo, sorry, saculo, and then put like a line after it. <laughs> you after each, you know, but that, or maybe a star. You, no, not a star. That's not that's not a good one. But it, like a line or an underscore or something like that, where the, you know I would know that this is long O. That's not a really good policy, but better would be to use one of the things in the video. All right. So good luck for doing that, and see you later.